Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is a research that Optimus has done over the years. This is actually analyst data that we convert into this video. So this is our intellectual property. Uh, and we want to set the tone uh, for the rest of the session, the workshop today. So the workshop today, it's not meant to sell anybody anything. The workshop today is meant to provide data, to provide information, to teach. Uh, uh, so our customers and our partners and even our employees who are in the workshop today uh, can make, make better informed decisions and understand this whole new revolution of AI. Uh, when this video started, uh, the idea is, as I speak, everybody reads the research and the data. But as the video started, uh, we saw a timeline of adoption of technology. We saw that the telephone, it took it over 75 years to hit 100 million people. Then, you know, we saw something funny about Angry Birds and, and uh, TikTok. And then we saw ChatGPT. It took ChatGPT two months, two months to reach 100 million people. And by the way, most of the time it was restricted. So it could have been even faster. The point and the fact is, and uh, George, can you share the PowerPoint please? Yeah, next one for him, next slide. Yeah, leave it there. So the point of the fact is the adoption of technology uh, and what data has told us it adopts faster as time goes by. So uh, we, I don't want to scare anybody here, just want to create a sense of urgency uh, we don't have years to decide how and when we're going to use this type of new technology. And Copilot is, in a way, ChatGPT. I'll talk to it in, in, in a second. This is actually a picture of me four months ago. Uh, I was I went to see Leonardo da Vinci's original painting of the Last Supper, uh, the Basilica di Santa Maria della Grazia, that was in Milan, Italy. And what hit me, and actually I took all these pictures, what hit me is for uh, offerings, right, for donations, they actually now have a self-service pay or order kiosk. Uh, what's interesting is Italy has one of the oldest demographics in the world. It's an aging population, uh, you know, Typically during a weekday at church, you don't have a lot of young people. And here we're seeing autonomous technologies are, you know, are starting to expand and grow in different fabrics of our life. Next. 
for him. Uh, as I, before I continue, uh, I do want to say that we have additional workshops coming up. Uh, you'll see them here at the end of the presentation. I'll provide, I'll bring these dates up again for those who you are interested. What we're also trying to do with these workshops is instead of being cool and fancy commercials, and uh, we want to do what I call the day in the life, the day in the life of a sales manager, the day in the life of a marketing agent, the day of a life of somebody in customer service, day of a life of somebody in finance, day of the life of somebody who's working in, in human resources. So we as people understand not theory, but how these tools can help us be more efficient and automate our day-to-day -day work lives for us and our employees. Next. So I just did a welcome intro and agenda. I do want to explain what's modern workplace and co-pilot. And then we'll jump with Jorge here uh, and he'll start doing the day in the life of. And uh, we're going to run various scenarios in there. Uh, one of them is going to be somebody in marketing doing uh, choosing a marketing database piece to send it via email and Facebook. Uh, it applies to both uh, B2C like retailers or B2B, uh, you know, professional services firms selling to another company. So we're going to run a scenario of a customer and customer opening up a ticket and customer service and a customer agent taking care of the ticket. A ticket, we typically think of it as IT technology, but a ticket could be uh, somebody calling a retailer, hey, I ordered this, it hasn't been delivered yet, or somebody opening up a ticket for a warranty, or somebody opening up a ticket, a customer complaining that, uh, you know, a real estate sales guy never returned my call and I'm mad at him and, you know, your customer service, or if you're a bank, uh, it could be an uh, ex x different types of scenarios so we're going to run customer service we're also going to run sales scenario uh, for everybody then in one slide we're going to explain how the licensing works for this type of scenario uh and we'll announce a a quick promotion that uh, uh that you know that we're having right now we'll go to uh, uh questions and answer sessions so next good morning good morning Next one here. And you guys saw there download, uh, uh, you know, on the iPhone or the Android stores. Uh, actually, Copilot right now is for free on mobile devices, also on your Edge, Microsoft Edge internet browser. Uh, but uh, I downloaded mine. I use mine. I'm actually constructing in my house right now. And uh, my contractors didn't know how much, how many gallons. Uh, I needed the pond to have uh, for a waterfall I was doing in my backyard and and I put it in chat GPT and I calculated for <laughs> for my contractors how big that they needed to make the pond. So uh, it's just incredible uh, where we're going to. So what's modern workplace and copilot? Uh, in order to understand <laughs> what's copilot, we need to understand where it sits, right? Uh, oh. Uh, we're getting all these emails, bombardments, Microsoft salespeople, partners saying, hey, you have to buy this light or you need this, right? So, you know, we're going to do a very, it's, this is, uh, I mean, I can spend two hours talking about Microsoft uh, 
uh, naming our products and what they do and how they're licensed and all of that. That's not the purpose of today. But you know, we do need to have a high level understanding of uh, what what it is we're we're taking a look at under under the Microsoft family of products. So M Microsoft refers to modern workplace is I would say it's almost a subsidiary. It's a group of products uh, in that group of products. So think about it of umbrella and under this umbrella or pyramid, we have Office 365. We all know Office 365. So that's Word, Outlook, PowerPoint, Excel, OneNote, and you know a couple of other less used apps. We also have Teams in there. That's under that family of products, although Teams is also packaged with Office 365 and certain plans. Again, we're not going to talk about those those plans. Uh, we also have Power Apps. Uh, Power Apps is where we have now Power BI and and, and Power Automate, etc. Et so think reporting and and some development workflow tools. Then outside of that, uh, we have. Uh, Think, I don't know if it's still called Yammer uh, uh, or the naming today, but that's more like a Facebook, Instagram X to run inside of a company. Obviously, you don't want, you know, this is where you talk about company related items within your employees and 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 your colleagues. Oh, by the way, uh, on uh, you know, under Office 365, Microsoft changed the name. So yes, it's complicated. Uh, now it's called Microsoft 365. So no longer Office 365. Now it's Microsoft 365. And outside of Office, Outlook, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, OneNote, and a couple of extra things. You also have Defender and and security in there. So Microsoft is you know definitely making security part part of our base so what is copilot copilot is microsoft started their ai journey before COVID, and they were investing billions of dollars a year until they came to a company that owns open ai that owns chat gpt so open ai really is the company behind the product, ChatGPT, supposed to be non for profit. Uh, and they invested $10 billion in ChatGPT. It was not a gift. And, uh, you know, a lot of the know how in ChatGPT, et cetera, uh, IP technology, you know, has been lent, licensed. Uh, I don't have the details of everything that went down down there. But that's how Microsoft has been accelerating uh, the Copilot rollout. So Microsoft is not new in AI, point number one. They were multi-billion dollar invested out there. I can tell you compared to their peers uh, uh, of the world, they, they were not the one that were investing the most or were up there. But now with ChatGPT, uh, you know, they've been able to leapfrog uh, their, their peers. So Copilot helps automate office and functions so don't think as copilot as you know most of us know copilot or heard of it in outlook and we'll show you working in a second but you know basically you open up an email in copilot you know let's say a customer complains about an invoice and a product and they want to return something copilot will read that email will write an answer for you in a blink of an eye and then you can just take a look out of it and hey you know customer regarding your uh return on item one two three four five with invoice whatever date whatever you know we're sorry this happened to you your warranty you're out of warranty these are the steps and the agent can just decide to hit send or not send they can also change the mood of the email they can say make it more aggressive you bad customer i don't want to talk to you anymore right or you know you can make it more subtle so it's it's it helps cut 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 the time invested in answering emails by double digits right so that's time back that's payroll cost reduced so um you know that's the simplest example and and you know we when we hear that we first think you know, it's it's you know it's a tool uh, for for Outlook, 
but I just gave you an example of customer service, right? So here we're seeing not really a technology tool at play. We're seeing, wait a minute, I can now, if I have 20, 30, 1,000 call center reps, five, they can be answering emails with you know a similar tone. So you know it provides a unified brand communication model that my organization is going to have with all of my customers out there. Uh, reduces typos, grammar errors, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, makes it more professional, so it just increased the brand uh, and the perception of of my company. So you know. It's almost like a matrix. What I wanted you guys to get out of co-pilot and modern workplace and all of this before we start, we have to analyze this more than just another gadget or feature in office. We need to take a look at this and how it can help my HR, my marketing, my sales, my IT, my finance be better, more efficient, faster, uh, you know, and, and doing their different small, minute, or big task in a given day. Next one, Jorge. So Jorge, I'll pass it over to you, my friend. Thank you, Hector, and, and welcome everyone to this session. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you a couple of scenarios that we could cover using not just Copilot, we are going to be using some other AI platforms, uh, but mainly but we are going to be uh, watching copilot so the first one is going to be a customer service scenario um i'm going to be showing you directly um, um the functionality give me a moment okay let me share my screen and we are going to be reviewing the scenario right now um let me share this screen okay so the first one is going to be a person that is going to be um, sending an email to a customer service department. The person wants to notify that is having some issues with their with their system. Jorge, Jorge, yes, um, I'm only seeing your window screen. I'm not yeah, seeing. Yeah. Okay, you know, thank you. Continue. I'm going to be just writing the email here. So the idea is that uh, like a person, a general person is going to write in an email. He is going to be using Copilot. He's going to click here in Copilot for sales. We are going to be using Copilot for sales in this moment. Uh, give me a moment. Give me a second. Okay, let me see. Uh, okay, so here, uh, sorry about that. So you can see my screen now. So here I can, I can write an email, for example, here, I just need to drag an email. Um, and I'm going to be writing an email to a, to a customer service department. So for example, here, I'm gonna write an email to support, to our support department, informing that, that I'm trying to mark my task or to check uh, as finished. Let's say that I have a system um, where, where I need to check or define the activities that I have to do every day. And I am getting some errors. So I can use Copilot here in my outlook to generate that draft. I don't want to write that. I just want to use Copilot so I could review the, 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 the message here, the message that Copilot just generate. And after that, I could start using some additional functionalities to, to complement the, the, the email. I could click here and uh, just draft. I could do it shorter. I could do it, uh, I could adjust the tone, do it more formal, more friendly. Uh, if I want to just suggest the person that probably we could have a meeting or something like that, uh, you could, you could, um, select the time that you are going to be suggesting for the meeting. You could suggest the language, um, 
you could translate in French or German if you want it. And if you want to mention something specific, you could do it as well. Let's say that you want to mention that it, it happens to probably 20 or 30 times per day or something like that. You could just mention the, the additional details here and the system or the compiler is going to be integrating the functionality. So if you want to get a little bit more information, probably make a little bit more formal or something like that, you just need to update the information, click on update, and the compiler is going to be generating um, like a new version of the email, including the things that you mentioned. Okay, so if you want to use that, you just need to add to the email and that's it. So I didn't write anything. I just described what, what I wanted in the email and, and that's it, okay? So that's one way to use it using the Outlook, for example. What I'm going to be doing here is that I'm going to be just sending this to, to the support in Optimus, like let's say webinar, um, um, based, I don't know. Um, and I'm going to be sending that to the, to the support um, Ticket system in, in, the, in our case is going to be the CRM. So I'm going to be sending that to the CRM. Now, if I enter to the CRM, I'm going to be just reviewing the, the message. Probably is going to be in a moment. So I'm going to receive that, that case in a moment in my CRM. And after that, I'm going to be showing you how to use the CRM um, to, to start, um, I mean, with the compiler as well. Let me. Let's wait for a moment. The case is going to be here. Yeah, the case is here. So if I send an email to my my to my support email, the system is going to create a ticket automatically. Okay. So what can I do using the 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 copilot as well? So, One, so yes. Jorge, yes. yeah, just as a recap, uh, this was a a client. Uh, let's say we're where Microsoft, the, the customer is Ford Motors. Ford Motors is using a Microsoft system. They had an error. They, you know, the person wanted to open up a ticket. Uh, they wrote, hey, that first sentence, uh, you know, what they wanted to write. We saw how Copilot wrote the whole email from one sentence. And then he went over. He said, hey, I wanted to make the email longer and more professional and Copilot. Uh, went through and, and updated that, and then he put it and he sent that over. Now, the view that everybody's seeing here would be of, you know, let's say Ford wrote the email, and now somebody in Microsoft Support Center uh, received uh, the email. So you you have the view now of, of the customer service department uh, receiving the support case. Continue. Yeah, that's correct. For them, it's going to be available something directly in the system. For example, I have a, a copilot functionality here that I could just click it. The system or the copilot functionality is going to be reviewing the case, is going to identify what the person is notifying, and is generating a summary for me. So it's going to generate like a summary. I don't need to read even the, the whole email or the whole description. I just need to read here and I'm going to get a, a, a really quick uh, summary in a moment. Okay, so that's using Copilot. Now, what happens if I want to use something different? Let's say that I want to use ChatGPT, for example. How can I use ChatGPT, for example, here? Well, in my CRM, for example, I could click here. Actually, I, I shouldn't click here. Let's say that I re review the case, I identify what was the situation, and I'm going to write. Hi, Mr. Jorge, we identify that the problem was that you don't have your credentials um, updated. Something like that, I don't know, something like that. So you could write the, the answer for the case, for example, and you could click here, for example, that's a, an integration that we did with ChatGPT. And basically what we are doing here is just taking this information and, and we are going to process this information with ChatGPT to generate a better way to write a thing or to translate thing. So what I'm just showing here is that if you want, you could use ChatGPT, you could use Copilot as well. But the idea is that you need to get advantage of the of the of the elements of the AI uh, tools that you have at the moment. For example, here I just changed a little bit the, the, the description, the redaction. 
And if I am okay with this redaction, I just need to click on accept suggestion and the system is going to transfer this description to the, to the, to the case. So what I'm doing here is that giving to the support agent a, a tool to improve their answers. Okay, so I'm using um, ChatGPT in this point. And um, in the same way, if the person want to send a, a, an email directly, uh, not just the answer, let's say that is going to write an email, uh, the person could go directly in the CRM, could go to the, to the email, start writing the email, and after that could use the functionality of the chat GPT and, and, and improve the redaction of the email that is going to be sent. So I am using two different tools to improve the quality of the messages that I am sending, not just for the user, for the customer service agent as well. Okay. But this is the this is a little bit um a, a little bit of the functionality that we could have in customer service. Let's say that I want to pass, or now I'm going to be passing to the sales. On sales, you're going to have some additional functionalities. The first one, of course, if you are in a sales um, department, probably the first thing that you want to use is go at the beginning, probably in, I mean, in a Power BI report or something like that to identify what the current situation of your sales processes. So you could go directly to the, in this case, I'm going to be doing directly in the CRM. I'm going to click on dashboards. I'm going to click on the sales inside. That is a a dashboard that we customize. And after that, you could go directly to the report and probably see the, the general opportunities, some, I mean, the information that you need to review for your sales process. Let's say that you want to start exploring what is happening with your customers. Um, probably I'm going to be entering into a specific company, any company, doesn't matter. And after that, after select one of the companies, you could start using chat GPT, you could start using Copilot, sorry, to get additional information. What is that? If I click here, I'm going to write, I'm going to find the functionality of, um, of Copilot. And if I am in a specific account, I could use some specific prompts, like for example, this one, get latest news for account. So the Copilot is going to find in the internet, and it's going to identify probably some news, some articles that talk about that company and it's going to provide me some additional insight. What is happening with that account? So that's information that I need. I don't need to go to Google or something like that. I just need to click here and the system is going to generate like a brief summary of the latest news that I have for that company. Okay. Another thing that is uh, that is cool here and, and that, that I could use during the, the copilot functionality, for example, I could, for example, show my pipeline, okay? I could use this instruction and the system is going to show me what is my pipeline, just, just in terms of the opportunities that I have assigned. So I don't, I don't need to go directly to the CRM and do the filter or something like that. I could go to the copilot directly and ask about my pipeline and the CRM is, I mean, the compiler is going to provide that information automatically. What happened if I enter to an specific, um, to an specific opportunity? So what is going to happen is that the, I could use functionalities like summarize opportunity. When I click on summarize opportunity, actually he do, he does that automatically. When I enter to the opportunity and I open the compiler functionality, it's going to summarize the opportunity. It's going to tell me the values, it's going to tell me the day, it's going to tell me for how long I have been working on that and some additional tips that could be useful for me. So I don't need to summarize by, by myself. I, I mean, I just need to open the compiler functionality and it's going to be summarizing the opportunity for me. So that's something pretty cool in the in the in the sales functionality as well. The same happened with the leads. Okay, so for example, if I enter to this person, the system is going to be able to identify who is this person, and is going to summarize uh, that the information that that person as well. Additionally, it's going to try to identify the the email and it's going to provide additional about the lead. That's something really useful as well. Because on that way, I could I, I could get additional information about my sales process, about my about my leads, 
that probably I need to ask for someone to do the research, to get that information. So it's going to be more quick information directly in the system. Okay, so that's another functionality that I could use on the copilot as well. Of course, I could have functionalities, additional functionalities, like for example, the function functionalities on Teams as well. Um, on Teams, you could have some additional analysis, like for example, if I enter to the team, so the, let's say that is this one, like for example, Every time that I have that I have in any any of the of the of the meetings that probably I'm going to be um, doing, I could activate the 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 transcript functionality, and after that I could use the copilot to analyze that transcript and generate additional insights about a meeting. I could identify in what minute the people talk about on a specific topic, what was the sentiment that probably if that person was talking positive or negative, I could identify that information here directly on Teams using the copilot functionality. I could identify what were the words that the people use most. I could use the people that participate in that meeting and actually I could identify what was the percentage of, of participation of that person? So that's something additional that I could use here, for example, like a summary. But additionally, in Teams, if, for example, I am talking with some specific people and I want to get a summary of what happened in this conversation or something like that, I could, for example, click here, highlight from past day. And it's going to review, the copilot is going to review the whole conversation and is going to provide some key points, a summary that is going to allow me to understand or get, or get that ready uh, information about what happened in that conversation. So that's another way to use it in the, in, the, in the Teams as well. So what we were reviewing was the customer service functionality in terms of the emails, in terms of the case analysis. Now we pass to the sales to identify what, how can we get additional information in opportunities in leads how to identify the pipeline, for example. I show you a little bit about Teams. Um, I didn't in, I didn't go deep in Teams um, because it's going to be another session just dedicated to the functionalities directly in Office. So that's why I didn't go deep in that functionality. Now I want to talk about marketing. In marketing, I'm going to be showing an additional functionality. It's not chat, it's not chat GPT, it's not copilot. It's something different called typeface. I think that is a really good functionality for a marketing team. And I'm going to be showing you how to use it. It's an AI functionality and it's pretty cool. But probably yeah. if you want to say something more. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. Uh, I was in New York three weeks ago on business and I was PV given some information by Microsoft where uh, this is being OEM'd, integrated within uh, Microsoft's marketing Dynamics 365 marketing functionality. So what you're going to see today is actually in the upcoming month or months or weeks, uh, the only thing I wasn't giving a date, this is actually now going to be embedded inside of Microsoft Dynamics 365. Uh, so in a way, what you're seeing here, you're going to be able to run it inside of, of Microsoft. Uh, continue, Jorge. Okay, thank you. So this platform is going to help you. And basically, this platform is, is, is focused more on, on the uh, for marketing teams, for, to generate content, to generate some additional elements, so and it's pretty useful. Let's just start from a template. Um, I'm going to be using this. Uh, the first thing that I want to highlight is that allows you to generate a, 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 an important group of, of pieces, like for example, TikTok, uh, a Google ad, uh, Facebook ad, I mean, Instagram app, any of the elements that you have here. The system is going to be able to help you to generate that information. Let's say that I want to generate an Instagram ad. So the system is going to ask me what is the goal of the information. Um, and the first thing is that 
I'm going to define what is the goal of the activity. Let's say promote Tesla car, any, any of the things that you want to generate. And after that, the assistant is going to ask you what exactly you want to include in the, in the, in the campaign or in the image that you want to generate. I know that there is, there are a lot of different tools that probably are going to be generating images. This one is precise. I mean, it is pretty useful. And additional is going to allow you to generate multiple pieces for Facebook, for, for Instagram, for, for some other thing. Additional is going to generate, for, for example, the, the hashtag, and it's going to generate the, 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 the image that, that you just request. Um, additionally, if you don't want, or if you want to change the color of the car or something like that, change, let's say change, change the color, the color of the car to blue or something like that. And, and the system is going to help you to generate that. Uh, well, it doesn't work like that. You change the tone, change the language, you create a new image. Let's say uh, where the prompt to generate the image. I'm going to just define here. And um, for example, um, Blooker, I don't know. So you could start interacting with the platform. It's going to be pretty simple to use. And the good thing is that generate a really high quality of images and additionally allows you to use multiple things like 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 I mentioned, like Facebook, like some other things. Probably it's going to take a moment at the beginning when you start using it, but at the end it's going to generate a really good quality of images. Additionally, if you want, you could, uh, for example, you could upload your own, your own images, like for example, the logo of your company, something like that, you could up, up, upload your, your images. And after that, integrate those logos or those images to the, to the elements that the system is going to be generating. So this is a really good platform to marketing team. It's going to help you to gain multiple things, multiple uh, content. And the quality of the content that is generating is really good. It's, 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 it's really awesome. Um, just to conclude uh, the point of presentation, I want to invite you to go to the Copilot Lab. Probably it's going to be available just if you already have the Copilot license. But it's something that is going to help you to identify how to get more benefits of your Copilot. It's going to show you how to use it or what are the prompts that you could use, for example, in Word, what are the prompts that I could use on Team. If I want to use it in Excel, I could select Excel and I could identify here what are the prompts that I could use directly on Excel. So this is a really good site. Um, so basically um, that's something that I want to just share with you. Um, so now I'm going to be back in the presentation. Let me share again the presentation to continue with the flow. Okay, let me go back to this one. This one was the one that we were previously, and now we have this. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the day before yesterday for uh, from early MIS departments and and our partners out there, we did a training on the different licensing. Copilot is thirty dollars just for the office version, thirty dollars per month. Uh, Copilot for sales, which is uh, the one you saw Jorge show earlier, is uh, fifty dollars. That one, as you see there, includes Copilot for Microsoft three sixty five. Remember at the beginning of the workshop, I explained, taught you guys that Microsoft 365 is also Office 365. It's a rebranding. Uh, specifically, you do need to be on a business standard premium E3 5 training. We're not going to go, uh, not training, sorry, sorry uh, plan. We're not going to go into detail what these plans are, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, on a separate session, we can definitely explain. Uh, next, Jorge. Uh, so this is a study. Uh, actually, Rafaela, can you get me the name of it's on the original documentation I I sent you 
Rafaela, can you get me the name of the analyst that did this study? Uh, this is not a Microsoft study. This is not an Optimist study. This was done by an analyst group. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, so just uh, when you have that information, say it, I'll keep on going through this. So they did a study on AI and ChatGPT mixed with Office dash Copilot. And uh, the, uh, they study, uh, uh, you know, they wanted to find out the return on investments. Uh, before that, uh, this these analysts, uh, they go through a, a survey. Uh, within their survey of needs, uh, they found that uh, going through different companies, they found out that, you know, the survey results came back. It said 64% of employees don't have enough time or energy to do their job. Uh, 57 percent. This is the one that really hit me. Uh, the time at work now is spent in communicating, meetings, email and chat. Obviously, these are office workers. It's not your warehouse picker packer. It's not your uh, uh, person, your 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 person in, in a fast food restaurant in KFC taking orders behind a cash register. Uh, this is more about office workers, but, you know, Officially, the new data, the new studies are showing that we spend more than 50% of our time uh, basically communicating. 43% uh, of the employees' time is creating, doing emails, right? We saw how Jorge uh, did in a two paragraph email uh, just using one set, second, uh, one sentence in seconds. So uh, multiply that by 15 emails by 20. In my case, I receive about 500 to 600 emails a day. Next. This is our return on investment study. It was done for the US. So I know we have a lot of people also from the Caribbean and, and Latin America and Asia here on the call. Uh, uh, for those of you who we're from Europe. Uh, this is more in line with you, uh, but this is a a a, a return on investment uh, study. And uh, what I found is, if these tools, if you're an executive making two hundred thousand dollars, let's say a CEO uh, in the Caribbean, right, uh, or a director VP in the U.S., uh, if these tools help you save 3.3 minutes a day. The organization pays a $200,000 salary. Take a look at Jorge's email. I do about 150 emails a day. I'm not going to tell you how much I make, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, I can tell you that uh, I've started doing a lot of my emails using Copilot and I'm saving more than five minutes a day just in emails. Uh, so that should pay my salary during the year in productivity. Uh, a manager, half that is almost double, 6.5 minutes a day. An individual contributor, 11 minutes. Uh, we start coming down more to Caribbean and let them salaries. Uh, Thirty thousand, you know, for an executive and in, in, in Latin America and and some places, not all the places, all other Caribbean islands like Bermuda and Cayman at are these levels we're seeing up here. But right, let you know, let's say the more, uh, you know, less rich Caribbean islands, uh, most of Latin would fall under, you know, executives making thirty thousand. Uh, clerks making fifteen, twenty thousand dollars a year. I mean, you're going to be looking at, you know, somebody can save half an hour of work in Latin America. Uh, you know, will definitely cover uh, salaries across the board. And when you start adding up these little things, write a letter in Word. When you start adding up, draft an email. Reply to an email. Let me read it. I like it. Just change one word. Make it more formal. Make it less like make it friendlier. Pum pum pum. Uh, there's emails. I I personally save up to 15 minutes uh, answering or whatever uh, using 
uh, using using the tool. Uh, you're in Excel. Are we going to see Excel in one of the next sessions where somebody in accounting it's going to have Excel open uh, with data and then uh, Copilot dash ChatGPT are going to interpret the numbers and and provide insight and do graphs automatically. Uh, I used to be a controller before. I used to be a, a an auditor in one of the big four firms. Uh, I've done a lot of Excel spreadsheets with numbers, with analysis, and then had to do little graphs behind it when I pressed them back to my management. And believe me, what used to take me an hour before in my accounting role, uh, I could possibly do now in 10, 15 minutes. So, uh, you know, basically, uh, you know, what, you know, the research, the study says is, all these little productivities because the realities is we like it or not. Some of us like Microsoft. Some of us hate Microsoft. The reality or not, 90% uh, of the business world uses Microsoft tools, Outlook, Excel, Word, whatever. So uh, we're already using the tool. What this does is just make it more, uh, more automatic. Next, Jorge. Uh, so again, you know what I was saying, meetings uh, help you summarize meetings uh, right now out of this event. I know we're recording it. What's going to happen, my team is going to press a button and Copilot is going to give us all the meetings summarized and we can save it. Uh, we do, we're in consulting, so we do a lot of projects. We have project management calls. Uh, what used to happen before, you used to have a one hour project management call uh, with a client. And then after that, Ooh. the consultant or the client had to sit down for another 15, 30 minutes to take all the notes, write them, and then send out the meeting notes, right, with the next action items that comes from a meeting. And it's not only projects. I mean, if you're accounting and you have the auditors in and let's say your auditor is Deloitte or Price or Ernst and you have a one hour meeting and they start asking for all these documents and they understand that this journal entry was wrong because gap accounting says one, two, three, four, five and you're in there, right? Uh, somebody has to take the notes and then send them out or, you know, put it in the audit papers. Right now, you just press a button in Teams and it summarizes everything. And not only that, Copilot comes and says, hey, the auditor asked the controller for a reconciliation of bank account 1345 due on Friday. Hey, uh, the, you know, the, the, the auditor has to provide a copy of the, you know, financial accounting standards uh, where they're basing uh, recommendation of a adjusting journal entry uh, for the closing of the year. I know, obviously, I'm an ex-accountant, and a lot of you are in audits on this call, so you know, making it a little bit more interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, you, you know, half an hour, an hour of you know, sitting down after a meeting, writing all of this down, mm -hmm. organizing the next steps, was done in in seconds, literally seconds. Uh, search looking for email threads uh for example copilot sometimes we're in these back and forths and emails internally with our colleagues friendly and unfriendly you can with a press of a button you can have a string of emails that's 30 or 40 replies back and forth and it'll summarize it for you uh another cool feature is as i told you i receive over 500 emails a day uh, so sometimes I open up my box and it's already after I answer four in the morning, I open it up. I already have 200 emails. So, uh, basically, you know, with a press of a button, I can tell it, give me the most important, urgent emails and it'll bring it up on my outlook. So I first focus instead of having to search to 200 emails, what are the most important ones? Uh, could be a particular client, could be somebody put urgent on the email, could be something uh, of interest to me that was inside of an email. Uh, it'll help me organize, so I attack the most urgent. You know, Microsoft Dynamics 365 marketing, how now you can create uh, without having 
pretty cool. So, you know, one of that the market where there's going to be a marketing salesperson or analyst where they're going to do all day long is use these AI tools to do content, right? Uh, I can just three. You know, you do a shopper or a weekly special, you know, magazine with all the different specials. You throw it out there, it's like you know the net and you try to cash whatever falls into the net. What we're seeing is that a grocer down and then they'll start saying, okay, give me, you know, for uh, women between the age of 15 and 30, you know, with, you know, with, you know, who buy organic and this and that, you know, give me the database. Boom. Okay, uh, let's write a promo of becoming healthier and looking younger. Boom. That's, you know, the AI will, will write something, you know, give me an image for a piece. Boom, it'll do it. And then they're sending. So you start becoming more of an analyst uh, in less time than building. And, uh, you know, the other day I was at a customer's office and they were being a next week shopper. And I asked a marketing manager, you know, uh, you know, if there's a lot of quality control. And he says, yeah, there's about 50 eyes piece of paper during the process and after we printed we 50 eyes and I thought he was kidding and he wasn't uh so you know now you're you're sitting down you're pumping out these promotions just targeted so I mentioned the analogy of fishing with a net uh here I'm going to use the analogy you know I'm gonna I want to catch marlin dolphin and sorry for all of you vegetarians out there uh uh I know pescatarians don't mind the meat eaters either, but marlins, uh, let's use uh, mahi mahi, right? And swordfish, you know, it's different types of fishing, right? And you'll find the swordfish at a certain part of, of the ocean. You'll find the mahi mahi near this beach. You'll find the other uh, fish somewhere else. And, you know, this is like taking a GPS, going to where the marlin is. And wait a minute, a marlin, I'm going to use a boat and a big fishing rod, right? And this other fish, I'm just going to use a spear, right? So literally, you know, you're you're targeting what you want uh, would be the analogy here. Next. So we kind of like covered this. Uh, we can share these slides next, Jorge. Uh, we can share these slides, and I've been already spoke towards this. Uh, we do have a 10% promotion right now on Microsoft 365 Copilot. Uh, so anybody interested, uh, next slide. Uh, you can write to operations at optimus.pro. Uh, you're going to see that on the top right of the page. Uh, my marketing told me, team, that if you click on register now there, it should take you to our website for all these upcoming sessions. There's one on Modern Workplace. Remember, Modern Workplace means Office 365 uh, plus uh, plus. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, security. Uh, there's a second one on on sales and marketing. The one today, the 21st, we will add new content and improve the one from today based on your feedback. We're going to have another licensing 101 on the 29th. Uh, we're going to have one for the retail and grocery industry, March 7th and 13th. And uh, we're going to have one for hospitality, hotels and restaurants, March 20th and 22nd. Uh, so uh, and we'll be adding co uh, security for Copilot and other interesting topics as we're getting feedback from, from all of you. So now we're in the question and answer. Uh, you can write in the chat section. Uh, again, www.optimist.pro slash workshops, or you should be able to click uh, there. Uh, you can email operations at optimist.pro. You can ask for our PowerPoint. Uh, it serves as our, you know, I'd say a decent white paper also. I uh, use a lot of Microsoft white papers and content. Shout out to Andrea Vicaria. Uh, she's a Microsoft 365 uh, manager and and Leslie also she's Dynamics 365. Uh, uh, you know they've given us support in this process. 
and uh, we also will have uh, this event and and workshop and other workshops in our YouTube page, which you'll see the address up there. Uh, with that said, uh, questions are confidential, so uh, they won't be shared. So you can write in the chat in Teams any questions. All oh, the analyst is uh, was a work trend index. Uh, so that was a study. It's called work trend mm -hmm. index. And we are recording this with AI. So <laughs> uh, we're uh, we're as the saying says, we're eating our own dog food. Questions. Questions are confidential, so we'll read it out. We won't say who wrote the question. So your name will remain anonymous. So somebody is asking, is there a Microsoft 365 app for Mac that can integrate all the Microsoft apps similar to what you see when you log into office.com in the web? So I don't know if we have Vishal here. Uh, so the way, the way I may rephrase this question is, uh, does the Mac version of Office 365 also have Copilot, or is it only on the Windows version? Uh, do we have an answer to that, guys, here? If not, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get it, and I, I'll source it to the person who, who wrote the question. So I don't know if Vishal's in this training, but that's an excellent question. I have not had heard it before. So I don't have an answer for that one. Uh, what I'll do is I'll have uh, uh, Rafaela. Can you write down that question and please send it uh, to Vishal and and to Andrea also, and let's get an answer for that. I'm also interested. Some of our but, consultants but, use Max actually, also. If you, could, yeah, if you could install the app in your iPhone, it, it's going to be something that you could download in the App Store. So it's going to be possible to install the same app in the in the Mac. No, but Jorge, uh, Microsoft on the Mac, their Office version, they tend to be a little bit behind in functionality. So, okay. uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, your 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 theory is logical. Microsoft's practice in the past has not been that. So, uh, let's get a a hard confirm here on you know on the Mac. The good thing is with Satya Nadella, they've been a lot, a lot more open. And if it isn't available in the Mac, Rafaela and Jorge, can you? Uh, yes, it is. We will try. We will try to ensure that it makes the uh, need for Rafa, but mm -hmm. there is an app for Mac, yeah. For Mac, there is. Okay. Uh, do something. Let's take it a step further. Uh, Rafael has Hector Rafael and Optimus has uh, a Mac he uses for work and Umberto also. Let's. I also want our team to test it. Uh, so let's take it a, a step further. And I know Hector Rafael has a Copilot license, so it should be easy for him to test it on his Mac. Just make sure that he uses Office for Mac. I can answer uh, around Jorge. We saw today, we saw uh, Microsoft, uh, uh, you know, uh, we saw some Dynamics 365 in uh, sales using Copilot and the marketing piece also. I can confirm that that does run on the Mac. Uh, so uh, because that's obviously running on on 
Microsoft Dynamics 365 and what Microsoft Dynamics 365 does run on the Mac and it also runs on 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 uh, so uh, you know on people on iPads also use it there. I myself use it on my iPad. So uh, I know that the functionality at least on the 365 sales uh, that does run. Correct, right, Jorge? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Any other questions? We're going once, going twice. And before I leave, I did notice some of the people in the session today. I know personally, I would love and I would like to also ask you the favor provide feedback on this session. Uh, we still have an opportunity to improve it before we do the next workshop. Uh, we're one of the first ones out there, if not the first ones to, to do this. So uh, we're improving every step of the way where this is, Copilot is new. It really got launched two weeks ago. So literally last night, uh, the return on investment information and the study I provided up there, I got last night from Microsoft, right? And it landed in their lap last night. So, you know, a lot of this is new, but I would really, really appreciate your feedback, how we can make this better. Should we make this shorter? Should we make it longer? Should we spend more time and on a certain topic? Should we change the format? So, uh, you know, I'm actually asking the public for uh, collaboration and, and your experience. So uh, appreciate that. Just send me an email. Or you can email operations. If you don't know me, you don't have my email. You can email operations at optimist.pro. So with that said, going once. Uh, Rafaela, can you send me that article on Microsoft 365 for Mac? Uh, please yes. send, yeah, please send that over and make sure it has anything on Copilot in it. If it has, just highlight it in, in the email. Okay, with that said, thank you. No more questions. Going once, going twice. TGIF, everybody. Thank God it's Friday. Have an excellent weekend. Ciao. Thank you, everyone. Bye.